Hello everyone, it's the first Sunday in October and of course time for a brand new prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Now of course last month I was working in my usual scraps journal, I want to continue doing that. Um, the theme for this month is taking inspiration from around your home and garden and I'm going to be starting off by using a paper plate. I mean nothing more appropriate from around the home than a paper plate, this is a gorgeous Dutch design, isn't it beautiful? So I've got to try and think of a way as to how I can incorporate this into my journal and I'm thinking that I'd quite like to cut out this centrepiece here. So my thinking cap has been on, wondering how I can go about doing this. Um, now, the circle here, if I measure it, is um, nine centimetres. Did I measure it to be nine centimetres? Now, I've got one of these tools here that um, I've hardly ever used. But my thinking is that I can cut myself um, a circle out of some um, scratch um, lightweight cardstock here to use as a template. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, this is the um, pointy um, end here. I'm just going to stick stick that in like that and I'm just going to attempt to cut myself a circle so I'm just pulling the paper here like this it doesn't have to be perfect I mean for cutting you know perfect circles I don't think this tool would be much good but I think it'll be perfect for what um, I need to use it um, for so let me just go around a couple of times to make sure that that um, is cut I think that will do and my purpose with this is just so that I've got something to find um, a center point um, so that I can do the same again on my paper plate so that's going to go there like that and then I'm going to use my pokey tool um, I had it here a second ago can't find it never mind let's just use the um, the sharp end of this here like this so I've gone through the center of my paper plate um, and I'm now going to cut cut a circle, hopefully, out of this without completely destroying it. So I'm just going to be more careful um, this time. And I'm just going to really carefully. Um, uh, in fact, it's easier just to pull the paper plate um, towards me, pressing um, quite, quite hard so that I get through this, um, this card. And I'm just going to go all the way, all the way around. Now you can see here that my measurements were slightly off, but that's okay because I have got myself a perfect um, circle, even though it's not completely um, accurate. But that will do, that will do fine. Um, and because it's only a fine hole in the centre, you're not really going to be able to notice it. Now, what I will do is take an emery board and just file around the edges just to get rid of um, any of these rough bits. And I'm just going to use my emery board just to file around the edge, just to smooth away these jaggedy uh, bits. And then I've got myself a lovely focal image then to um, play with. So I just need to decide where this might be able to go inside my journal. That's much better, much smoother. And in fact, actually, I can take it onto the other side as well and do exactly the same thing. Um, and then I've got to put my thinking cap on as to what I can do with the rest of this beautiful paper paper plate because that's just crying out for something to be made um, with that as well. I think that's going to become some kind of wall hanging where I can pop um, something in the middle. Now, size-wise, I'm thinking that this section here in the journal is perfect for this embellishment. So I'm just going to take um, this section um, here out. Um, let's um, pop that to one side for um, a second. Um, you see, that is just way, way too busy. Um, the back may be a possibility. I want something that's going to go with either of these two sections um, here. And actually, I'm thinking that um, colour-wise, this goes better with the bird. Um, so maybe we can do something on this um, part here. We've got um, the plain background in the centre, same with this one here. Let's Let's remove that. Let's try and do something with this. Let me just have a play around and see what I can come up with. Well, my goodness me, I've pulled out absolutely all sorts and spent ages trying to figure out what to do with this. And then the idea hit me as clear as day. Unfold the doily Nina um, and that will be perfect. 
And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to glue this down here like this. I don't think I'm even going to ink around the edges. I just like the crisp whiteness of that. I think that's going to look beautiful. Our doilies are always really tricky to glue down. So I think what I'll do is I'll glue this down first. I've invested in some of this art glitter glue that um, everyone is raving about. So let's see. Um, if it's, um, you know, as good as people are saying it is. I've also invested in one of these metal fine liner tips. As you can see, people are saying that this is really strong and flexible as well. Um, right, what I'll do is I'll put the doily here like this. Let me try and get this central. Let's see how much wiggle room we've got with um, with this so just hold hold that flat people are saying it's drying really quickly really easy to use um, so after I've played with this a few times I will let you know my thoughts here we go so so that's that um, glued down and I think then all I'll do is I'll apply glue just to the edge of the cardboard here I'm not going to apply it to the um, edges of the doily here let's leave that flappy um, is that is that a word? You know what I mean. Um, sometimes it's nice to have dimension where everything isn't glued completely flat to the page. Um, so let's have a look. How did I want this to go? So make sure I get this the right way um, around. It's like that, isn't it? So I'm just going to glue glue this on just just like that and what a simple page um, that is all of the pages in my journal are really simple and I know that some of you have said that you really like how simple um, it is you know that everything is just you know uncluttered and I really like that too so bring back um, that page there that's where that one there is going to go phew I have got it the right way around first of all I'm just going to weight this down underneath a heavy book just to make sure that that glue grabs that's been weighted down underneath a heavy book now of course this piece here was inside um, and I think I'm going to move it I'm going to pop this inside here like this I think that's beautiful um, and I think I'm going to move this to here um, let's have a look and see how how this looks how does it work with the pages on the other the, on the other side you see I think that works much better color wise um, the colors match beautifully so so there we go um, so I just need to try and find something eventually to fill those pages as well so what are we going to do next Next, I want to try and incorporate this into my journal. This is the Paul Rubens watercolour wreath I did earlier on in the week. Um, I absolutely love it. It's just beautiful. But I want to turn this into a journal page. Now, I'm going to start off by stamping um, a squirrel, which I think will go really well with my wreath and the autumn theme. We've got loads of squirrels running around in our garden all year round, but, you know, everybody associates them with them. Um, with autumn I think so I'm just going to um, stamp this stamp here this is one from your creative um, studio um, now I've got some ink all around the edge of the stamp here and I'm going to remove that first um, that's the bugbear with these stamps now I know that people have told me in the past just um, cut some away sorry guys but I just can't bring myself to do it because I just love these um, wooden stamps as um, inconvenient as sometimes they they might be I just think they're aesthetically pleasing um, to me so let me just um, pop that on there again and I'm just going to pop my squirrel down here like this I'm stamping it on a piece of uh, cardi paper k-h-a-d-i um, cardi is um, cotton rag paper I'm just using distress ink here in frayed burlap just to stamp my image and just holding it down for a few minutes uh, or a few seconds just for the ink to grab it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to paint it and there we go there's my cute little um, squirrel let's try and paint this cute little squirrel now the squirrels um, in our area are gray um, not red squirrels but um, but let's just try and make this whimsical let's see what we can do with this I'm using my um, metallic colors again so let's just pop pop his eye in just just like that that's cute and I'm going to give that a quick dry with the heat tool 
just so that when I add another colour it just doesn't bleed all over the place. There we go, I think that should do, do fine. And then I'm just going to give him some um, grey ears, I think. So just using a really fine um, watercolour brush here. And I'm going in with the metallics just to um, make sure that it um, blends in with the beautiful painting that I did um, a couple of days ago. So, so there we go. Um, what should we do now? Let's give him some red feet. And we'll try and get um, these colours to really blend, blend nicely. Maybe we can give him um, some red highlights on the tip of his tail. As I've said, the squirrels here are grey, but you know, we can make this whimsical, can't we? If we if we want to. So let's let's do this. Move that out of the way, just so that. Um, I don't ruin it. decided I just want to lighten this area here I'm just pulling in some of this um, silver colour again whilst the paints are still wet just to try and add some lightness to this area here you probably won't see it now whilst it's wet but I think you will once it's um, once it's dry gorgeous there's my cute little squirrel I'm just going to use a Stabilo all pencil I think just to give his eye a little bit of definition. Um, I do want a spot of white. And of course the Posca paint pen is the best thing to use for that so just a tiny dab of white there and how cute um, is he? So I just need to add him to my wreath. Oh, I want uh, this to have some rough edges so let's have a look. Let's use the ruler here, the metal ruler to tear this. Um, I'm just going to go all the way around like like this and I need to find a way of um, of mounting it. How can I how can I do this? In fact, actually, if I put that straight that's good. In fact, I should have done the same with this um this here because um, that would have been a bit a bit neater. Let's see if we can do that again. Hold that firmly, firmly down. That's cool. There we go. Let's move these um, pieces out of the way, and the same here, like this. Isn't that cute? Um, it's not completely straight, but I'm okay with that. So that's my cute little squirrel. I am going to um, just distress the edges, just like this. I like the way that looks and then I'm just going to um, pop this onto a piece of burlap and I'm going to take it off to my sewing machine and just sew around the edges just 
just like that and that's going to um, add a focal image here I know it's covering up some of the um, leaves and maybe some of the acorns but that's okay um, maybe we can have that there like that I don't know we'll have a play around with that um, in a minute maybe it could go in the center um, I'm not quite sure let's start off by just adding a small amount of glue um, just to the centre of that and as I've said I'm just going to take that off to the um, sewing machine and just put a couple of stitches around the um, edge you know how much I like that look that's bugging me not quite um, not quite straight and as soon as I've done that I'll be I'll be straight back that's a really cute embellishment. Just look at that. Um, and the linen I've used for this um, was the um, Eleganza natural linen. And I think this is probably three inches. Let's have a look. Three, three inches. So there we go. I'm running out of pages in this gorgeous journal. We're nearly at the end now, but I did find one. Um, we've got this gorgeous owl page, which of course is really autumnal. And I just think it's going to be perfect on the other side um, of this one here. So, and we've got this autumnal piece um, on that side there as well. So even more perfect. So I want it to go here, something like this. I have pulled out some, um, I think this is silk. This was gifted to me um, in Happy Mail. I've got this um, beautiful organza. Um, now, do I want the organza or do I want the um, silk or do I want both? Oh my gosh. Now, decisions, decisions. Um, but I did think it would be really nice to have some fabric um, in this. I've just dinked around the edges of this um, with frayed burlap using my brush so distress ink in frayed burlap and I've just gone all the way um, around like this just to frame it. Um, I do want to do the same with with this here so just using the ink that's already on the brush um, I need a bit more. Um, I want to be um, careful with this because it's quite strong. This is um, a fairly new um, ink pad so let's go around like this, just because the paper at the moment is just a little bit too white, um, I think. Now I'm just going to try and pull it into the centre a little bit um, as well. Here we go, just because this paper is quite white. This is the watercolour paper from Paul Rubin's beautiful quality um, paper to paint on, by the way. So here we go. That looks so much nicer. I really like that. So now I need to um, just glue my fabric down. Now, I don't know whether I can bring myself to use this fabric. You are going to see such um, a small amount of it once everything is glued down. And it's just so sheer and beautiful. Now that I've inked around the edges, I think that's going to be um, enough. And so I think I'm just going to leave that there like that and glue my little squirrel um, on top. Um, do I want to do that? Do you know, I think I do. So let's just put um, a small amount of this glue right the way around the edge. I will give you my thoughts um, on this glue once I've used it a few more times. As I've said, it's new to me, so, um, so I'm not too sure at this stage. So let's glue that down. Inking around the edges has just made um, a huge difference. It's just grunged it up a bit and given it that vintage feel. So what have I done with my squirrel? Now I think I want my squirrel to go there like that. So again, I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue. This um, this glue is good for fabric um, as well, just like um, Fabri-Tac. So there we go. Let's um, stick that down and I'm just going to have to stick something heavy on top just to make sure that um, that grabs. There's a little pin, by the way, that just goes in the um, end of this glue. They're, they're like that. I'm leaving that there for today. I'm so happy that I've been able to incorporate this into my journal. The squirrel is just oh so cute and I love this um, Delf looking page. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely loved that plate. Um, and if anybody's got um, any ideas as to how you think I should um, use the rest of this paper plate then you know please do feel free to leave me um, a comment below. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing two more 
pages in this fabulous journal come together. Um, I will be back soon to finish off the rest. But um, just to reiterate, the um, prompt for this month is inspiration from the home and the garden. So this one here is clearly from the um, home with the paper plate, um, the doily, etc. And the other page, if I can find it, clearly inspired by the garden at this time of year. It's very, very autumnal here at the moment. Um, but I hope it's given you some ideas. Um, so if you've enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week as well to see what she's been up to. Um, but most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.